Okay, there is a problem that's publicized quite a lot on online with the Cummings diesel truck. It has to do with the grid heater um, falling apart and the boat's going into cylinder six, basically doing a major damage to your engine. I've been trying to figure out how common the problem is, if it's exaggerated or just a handful, and possible circumstances. People who live down south have experienced that problem. People who have lived in, in between and further north have also experienced that problem. Whether it's defective materials involved or there's a firmware issue or maybe a failure of another component that's contributing to this. During winter, when it's really cold, you turn the ignition on, uh, there is a system in there where it will heat up a grid heater up to drawing over 200 amps and he heats up the air so that it will start. I'm assuming if you leave it on long enough, uh, besides killing your uh, battery over uh, quicker, uh, could cause a meltdown. And yet, there are people who don't use it at all because they're in a warm climate and, and it still happens. So, and doesn't appear that Cummings considered it a warranty issue or a recall issue. And from what I can gather, they don't even publish just how many cases of this might be. So, what option do you have besides spending a thousand, two thousand dollars? There are steps that you can do on a regular maintenance to give you the ease of mind, peace of mind or when it's time to do a major fix. One of the problems with working on a diesel is to get up in there. Uh, a ladder, yeah, you can do it, but it's hard. And and also you can get one of those uh, benches there. But when you're mobile portable, I decided I'm gonna try this thing here. It's good for 500 pounds, I saw it advertised. So let's see how it works and I'll explain to you what we're talking about. Okay. Let's see if we have here. That's it right there. If you shake this and it's flimsy, then you know you got a problem. Another thing to look at, which is a bit difficult to do, from here, well, I don't think I'd be able to do it. One of my fingers is a block. I assume it's a hard plastic block or something. If you see it kind of uh, wrinkling a little bit, that would be another indication that you have to worry. But judging by my finger here, it seems to be okay. So, this cable will run, like there's two batteries in this truck, which is standard. This cable will run back to the passenger battery, which is where I'm gonna go next. Okay. Well, so far I have to say this set matter works. It brings me close. Okay. That's that's where it is. Here was the cable. Right there. Yeah. No, yeah, that's the cable. Right there. It goes to this. Uh, I think it's 
some sort of boost boosting uh, element right there is a switch when it's cold the operating system will tell to energize and it'll take the 12 volts and give it 200 amps some people seeing that they feel they're in a warm environment to supply it safe have disconnected that those connections and heat shrink it and this way they'll never have to worry about uh, the grid heater getting hot if that's the cause let's see if i can get a better angle with this i'm gonna try a different position Not really. Let me see if I have to go with this. There you go. That's it right here. So you disconnect that. That is what some people do. I'm just wondering if it's a possibility that this switch solenoid, whatever you call it, stays active when it shouldn't be, causing it to overheat. I'm not sure if it's a mechanical switch or what. I would have to look online and see if I can find the internal parts of it. Sometimes um, contacts can stick, so maybe that's the cause, I don't know. So the solution is There are two or three third parties that uh, relocates the grid heater. Totally different design. Okay. Now we'll edit all that not necessary movements there. Okay. Let me just wide angle. This unit here. EGR, this goes into the manifold. The grid heaters in here. According to Banks, there's a lot of restrictions the way it's designed. And for about a thousand dollars US, about well, fifteen, sixteen hundred here in Canada, way overpriced. This whole assembly is replaced. The old grid heater is removed and the heating element mounts on top. And off, according to Banks, uh, it does give you uh, an improvement a little bit. Not, nothing really great because to get the full benefits of improvements, you have to do more modifications or updates to remove the restriction. On a few videos, I, I've seen people say, yeah, there's a, a nice improvement, less hesitation, stuff like that. But uh, it wouldn't be worth spending that money just for that. But just to get rid of that grid heater worry, probably worth it. So, so far, it looks good. I'm pushing 180,000 kilometers. Everything feels solid, so maybe I'll be good for this winter. <laughs> I'll just check it every so often. And uh, I'll keep on doing some research, keep an eye out, try to figure out what really is the cause of it. <clears throat> is it a design and issue, the way it's built? In, in, in proper parts are used where the, the heating element is located. Or we have a problem with the switch there that switches on when it's cold uh, to provide over 200 amps of power to heat the element. Is it sticking? Is it failing? Uh, unfortunately, no one's giving an answer. <laughs> 
So that's the story. And regarding this chair, I'm on a slope downhill, but I must say, I can get into things. <laughs> now it'd be very easy for me to replace the uh, crankcase filter. Yeah, I think I got I got that resolved. Portable is flat. Yeah, let me just close it up. Yeah, great. So now I can carry that on a truck or leave it in the house because uh, next time I'm doing crankcase filter changing, it will work. Okay. I'll close up the hill a little bit now. So, anyone had any issues with the, the grid heater failure? Let me know. And what they think the cause may have been. And I'm just curious to know how common it is. And in case you have a truck and you just heard about it for the first time, I would strongly recommend to check that. Or if you bring your vehicle to dealers on a regular basis, even when it's under warranty, get them to check it. Physically do the same thing. You know, they do the shake, they do uh, see if there's any warping underneath the boat. If, if there is, it needs to be replaced. Under warranty, I guess they'll just replace it with the same stuff again. If it's not under warranty, It'd be probably cheaper just to put uh, the bank system. There's a couple other brands, but uh, it does solve the greeter hit uh, heater issue. But I don't think you'll get the extra airflow and stuff like that. So if you're gonna spend that much money, maybe you're better off to get something extra benefit out of it. And. Let me take a look at my solar panel. I really love the solar panel setup. <clears throat> there you go. 200 watts. It just keeps my battery nicely topped off. Especially during winter time. You're doing a lot of uh, cold driving, short distance. You won't get the message there saying that your battery is low. Okay. I will catch you later. Yeah, I put this cover on for winter time. It, when it's really cold, you will get uh, not enough heat inside sometimes. So, yeah, it's worth it. It came with the truck. So, I use it. And I, you can buy third party might look a little bit more dressed here but this works so I'm happy with with it it also comes with covering the, the lower part but I never bothered uh, installing that because I would have to put clips on and I didn't want to do that so this this way it's easy to access I have my heater block here